deal with people a little bit. Um, here is another um, picture. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this This is one? another shower picture. Uh, and this is, uh, I used acid to eat the waves out so that you can see the different reflections of the glass. Um, it's a very big piece. And uh, I didn't get a good picture that I wanted. I was outside this gentleman's house. He was on the second floor. And he was taking a shower with his uh, two-year-old child. And he was holding the child up. And you could see his reflection through the glass of him and the child taking a shower. It was, it was, and the water coming down. Um, a picture that I really would have loved to have gotten. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, lovely to look at. Um, uh, so, do you find your inspiration comes uh, uh, to you sort of spontaneously, or is it from life situations that arise, or where do you? Basically, I sit down and I draw four lines for the outline of a drawing using a magic marker, usually black, and then I take a pencil and I spend no more than 30 seconds and compose the entire picture. And then I pay nothing, no attention to anything except for the lines that are on the picture that I drew and I create the picture from there. And I think you mentioned to me that you like to work on several things at once? Yes, I'm working on five paintings right now. Uh, one is the Mission Blue Butterfly for the society that saved San Bruno Mountain. And they did it because uh, the endangered species, the Mission Blue Butterfly, was on. They were losing the battle. They fought for 30 years. Uh, it was going to be developed. And they found that butterfly, and it was turned into a national park on one side of the mountain and a state park on the other. So I'm thanking them for having saved the mountain. Oh, well, that's a wonderful <laughs> procedure. So you're making your art uh, kind of a, uh, a response to that, yeah. to that event. Um, and do you find that you paint uh, equally throughout the year, or are there some seasons that are better than others for you? I usually don't do very well painting in November and December because I'm busy making money, making uh, uh, sun catchers and butterflies and hummingbirds and stuff for stores to try to make enough money to get through July. I see. Okay. So um, it's mostly in the late summer and early fall then? Oh, no. Uh, it's, except for in November and December, I, I paint most of the time. I mean, that's my greatest pleasure. Well, it certainly has produced beautiful results. Now, this one is called Magnolia. Magnolias in Rain. Magnolias in Rain. And it's interesting in that you'll notice there are no raindrops in front of the magnolias. Because of the way I paint, I paint the nearest thing first and the furthest thing last because it's reverse. And uh, I had painted the, the flowers and the, and the limbs, and I said, I don't have a third name, and all my paintings have three names. So I said, Magnolia's in rain. So I added the raindrops I and see. the gray sky. It is a lovely painting. Thank and you. Again, it's my mother's favorite. Such an atmospheric uh, mm. effect that you've achieved there. Um, but I'd like to um, talk a little bit now about the um, grant that you did. Can you tell us a little bit about how the grant came to you? Well, I was out with my friend Arthur having lunch, and he had gotten a $10,000 grant from the um, San Francisco Art Commission Equity Grants Program mm -hmm. for a book. And I said, well, he said, well, why don't you do something? And I said, well, what can I do? I mean, you know, really. He said, well, what are your interests? I said, well, stained glass, square dancing. He said, there's your answer. And so I thought, why don't I get 16 people to make stained glass windows <coughs> who are square dancers that <coughs> express their love of square dancing? And so that's how it came about. Well, let's uh, take a look now at uh, the video that we have. You made a little video about that project. If I can bring that up, let's see if this will work. My name is Dan Smith. I'm a square dancer and a stained glass artist. The San Francisco Art Commission has given me a grant to help 16 dancers make stained glass windows on the subject of square dancing. Each is revealing as they make their window some aspect of the dance that has meaning to them. It's a joy, I mean a real joy, to work with such a richly varied group of personalities. Abby has created a stained glass panel based on the square dance call, Box the Nat. She's shown the various hand positions that are held during that call, and in the center of that circle of hands, She's placed a gnat as if she had put it in a box. No Boo has made a wondrous window based on the square dance call Weave the Ring 
and he's brought his formal training in chalk and ink to this world of glass and color. Rogin's panel has teacups and flowers and is based on the square dance call teacup chain. Teacups connote friendship for her and she says she's found friendship in the square dance clubs and by the way so have I. Tumas has chosen to make a window named the collar. It shows Andy Shore a nationally known square dance collar in a barn with a mic in his hand. Fabian created a window with a blue jay, ferns, leaves, and a redwood tree. He dances at the annual Stumptown Stomp. A dangle is a little medal that you get to put underneath your nameplate whenever you go to a special event. The Western Star had its 20th anniversary two years ago and had 11 dances held all around the bay, and he has created a window based on the design of that dangle called Circulate the Bay. Donald Westcott Bullseye has made a simple, solemn window. It hearkens us to remember those we have lost to AIDS, but who still dance with us in the circle of life. Gary, on the other hand, has made a stained glass window with a duck in a pond. Because in the square dance called AC Ducey, everybody says, quack, quack. It's been a joy, a real joy, to work with this group of untrained people and to watch their hands make physical objects that show their love of the dance. Understand that they have now used their hands to make stained glass windows as nimbly as they use their feet to twirl up on the square dance floor. So now, Tomas, let's uh, talk to you a little bit. You participated in that project. We saw one of your um, uh, designs there. Um, how did you hear about the project uh, in the first place? I uh, had just uh, joined the uh, square dance group. It's called uh, Fog of City Dancers. And uh, Dan would announce that he was doing the project. And I asked if I could be one of the participants. And uh, I decided to do the collar. And how did you... Um, uh, go about working with Dan? Uh, did you get ideas from him or did he take the idea from you and draw it or how did you get the, the outlines of the picture? No, um, I did the, the drawing myself. I, uh, I just came up with the idea that I was going to do the collar and so I did the drawing and I wanted to do it in a barn and uh, I chose the colors. All the colors meant something very special to me. And it was like a bale of hay is the yellow. Yellow is my favorite color. And my favorite thing is that he showed me how to do reverse painting, and that's how I did the uh, hands, the arms, and the face. Let's take a look at that picture now so people can see it up on the screen. So the bale of hay is that yellow um, square in the lower corner? Yes, it is. Okay. And tell me a little bit about the pictures, uh, the colors. You said the colors were special to you? Uh, the uh, blue and the white and the black. That all represents uh, the leather community, mm -hmm. and um, the light blue of the turquoise is represents my hometown, where I came from. It's a mining community, and that's supposed to be like copper and turquoise, and uh, the beams are all like pine from the forests, from the White Mountains there in Arizona. I'm from eastern Arizona. So um, these pictures actually have a lot of. Um, symbolic content, I guess, Dan, don't they? Yes, I mean, one thing I wanted to encourage was that people should include things that mean something to them. And like uh, Tomas really did, did that in spades. Um, a lot of those pictures have a, a symbolic meaning. We have um, a picture now of Tomas at work, I think, um, on the project, and uh, there you are, Tomas. <laughs> do you remember that stage of the... Uh, yes, I do. Explain to them what you're doing, your foiling. Uh, this is uh, after you uh, cut a piece of glass, mm -hmm. you have to uh, foil all around it mm -hmm. so that you can uh, solder it onto the, what do you call the main thing? Uh, onto the pattern. The pa yeah. So that's lead foil that you're using? I don't think No, it's, it's copper foil. Oh, copper foil. It okay. was developed by Tiffany, but now it's very... It, it's got glue on one side, so you just take the foil and you put it over the glass and it glues it on. Yeah, it just sticks right onto it. 